All right, I'm not sure where I'm going to put my camera yet, but we'll, we'll see when we get in there. It'll probably remain where it is or go over to the side where it usually is, but for now I just have to move it. Um, so I'm going to be back on a visual novel binge, I guess, maybe. I've got this on um, because I have a repetitive strain injury, I guess. Just lucky me. Um, but yeah. I've or so I've already played <laughs> I'm I'm everywhere. Okay. It's called Tale of Tales. Um and yeah, I've already played this route, another route, and another route, but there was a new one brought out quite a while ago now, and I haven't played that one. And also I played this like a really long time ago, so I actually don't really remember stuff. So honestly it's gonna be um a surprise to me as well, I think. Um, maybe stuff will come back to me, but as of right now, I don't remember much about it. Um, because it was a, quite a while ago. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe 2017? No. Earlier than that? I don't remember. Um, two, uh, before 2020. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> uh, we'll get into more about the, it's not just like a straight visual novel, I guess. There's like a little tiny bit more to it than that. So um, we have Neil Forrester, age 24, height 5'9", five, uh, five job intern executive. If I remember correctly, he's like a richy rich boy. <sighs> when you were younger and much more of a tomboy, you and Neil happened to cross paths when he decided to run away from his parents who forced him to act like a proper child. Years later, you two meet as adults, except Neil doesn't recognize you. No, he was under the impression that you were a boy. So he was under the impression that you were a boy when you were younger. When you met. Uh, the misunderstanding leaves Neil embarrassed. Neil's attitude towards you is cold and cruel, and you wonder if that sweet little boy he used to be was just your imagination. You try your best to befriend him, but Neil will have none of that. And what happens when you finally get under that cold exterior he's crafted? Will he be that sweet little boy again? Uh, okay. So this is the- this is the next bit. Um, the interesting thing about this, for me, is, um, is that there's no right or wrong choices, there's no bad ends, as far as I'm aware. I'm pretty sure I'm right in that. Um, but you get to choose whether you're, like, innocent or a bit more sassy. So Something like that. Let's just uh, quickly just choose things. I mean, I guess that's closest to my hair color. Gotta get changed. See, this is okay. So this is the other thing. I don't have any shoes apparently. Oh no, I do have shoes. Um. Uh, this is the other thing. You're like a fashion designer person. Um, and, oh, isn't that, isn't that pretty picture? So yeah, you're a fashion designer and yes, your hair color and eye color does make a difference in like CGs and stuff, I think. Again, trying to remember is very difficult, but yeah, you have to like create things and I will, I won't, I'll, I'll do that maybe the first few times, but then I'll do that off screen because it's kind of cumbersome you have to like do oh what's what's my last name what's my last name hmm I mean don't don't I usually just do this <laughs> Let's choose a different one. What, should we just go with Hearth? Sure, why not? Why not? Enter a boutique name, yeah. So this is the thing, you own like a boutique and you make your own clothes. That's like your character's backstory. Um... Oh, lim... Is that... Is that... Is that... Is that Olymp Olympus? Olympus? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was right the first time. I was right the only time. Yes, wait, fine. 
Oh, this is correct. Okay. I want to get to the option menu so that I can, like, fiddle about with the volume. Okay. I do have the DLC, but I won't be doing that here, I don't think, because uh, unless I put a picture up in place of it. I'm not reading it out, though, so that's... Mm. Reading out the stuff in, um... Oh, what was that? What was that vision novel called? Fuck, I've completely forgotten. It was like about vampires though, and there was some spicy scenes in it, and um... Yeah. <laughs> uh, his longer epilogue and science- see, see, these are things I don't know because I did buy these. I'm getting achievements for some reason. Dimitri's plus purchased his- yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, why do they're on- they're disabled? What? I'm, I'm so confused. So much has changed since I last played. Okay, here's, here's the main menu. To start off your journey, why don't you read the first chapter by clicking the continue button anyway? Actually, I'd like to go to the... There's- oh, here's the- oh. <laughs> My bad. Sound... Voices. There is no voices in this game. What's the main voice? Oh my god, I'm like, what is this? Like, I'm gonna turn that on, but I don't know what it means. Okay, let's just continue. Uh, Tale of Tales is a light-hearted game, but each route brings its own unique set of warnings and triggers. Would you like to review these? I don't remember there being anything terrible. Um, but yeah, he's mean to the main character. He's rude. The minor character death. A nosebleed. These will- okay, these are the spoilers. So, his sexual behaviours, because that's very important. He's not very dominant, which... Personally, I like. Uh, submissive, doesn't mind, whatever. Uh, rough, never, good. Gentle, most of the time, mostly vanilla. He is hesitant and curious. He's flushed at flustered occasionally, cockiness surprisingly low, and he has an average libido. These are all, like, cute little- cute little things. No, I'm, I know how to play a visual novel. I'm good. Okay, I've been playing the entire day with my friends at the local playground. We played all sorts of games. Tags, uh, tag, cops and robbers, hide and seek. It was all so much fun. The sun is starting to set and all of the other kids have gone home already. I should probably head home as well. My mother is making dinner and waiting for me. I look down at my hands, which are dirty, and there's a cut on my knee. My clothes have spots of green from rolling around in the grass with the other kids. She's not going to like this. I'm probably going to get yelled at again. But I have to go home. Mother, I'm home. I yell when I open the door. Mother is in the kitchen, preparing food. Wash your hands and sit down for dinner, she yells back. Obediently, I walk towards the kitchen to wash my hands. Falky, she gasps, gasps at me. You're completely filthy. Were you playing with the boys again? Look at your clothes. What am I going to do with you? How I wish you were more girly. I look down at the floor. Mother is always saying things like this to me. I just like playing around with kids. I don't care about my clothes. Come on now, wash up and sit down. I have a surprise for you after dinner. My eyes light up, a present that's unexpected. I hurriedly wash my hands and sit down. When dinner is served, mother keeps making comments how I shouldn't play so roughly and I should keep my clothes clean. I finish up my food, eager for my present. Okay, let's um just quickly change my position. And that should be fine. You can still you can still see the the box. Time for your surprise, Valky, she exclaims. She walks out of the room, then returns soon after, holding a large white box. She hands it over to me. Gleefully, I open it up. A bunch of pink fabric is in the box. A bit confused, I pick it up. I'm staring at a little pink dress in my tiny hands. It feels smooth against my skin, like it's really expensive. The fake crystals embedded into the hem sparkle brilliantly. I'm horrified. It's like a princess dress, and I hate princess dresses. They get in the way of playing. Wouldn't it simply look adorable on you? Grandma made it for you, she says. I don't remember them these sprites moving, by the way, either, and I don't remember Um I don't remember her having like even a vague look to her. I'm gonna have to because I used to have an old YouTube channel where I made all my videos unlisted. Um in the with the idea that I was eventually gonna, you know, make them public one day and I just didn't. 
I'm gonna have to look back on that one and see the changes because I didn't expect these things to change. Anyway, I always, I like like before. I'm not gonna be kind. I'm gonna be fierce. That's my, that's always my option. Um, I wonder if they changed that as well. What it, what it's called? Or maybe it's just for this one. I don't know. But I never choose the innocent option. No, gross. I scrunch up my nose and throw the dress on the ground. In my opinion, the fierce options are more fun. Valky, I ain't wearing that girly stuff. I put on my black cap with more force than usual and I sprint out of the house. A spoiled child. I am a spoiled child. The sun is completely gone and I arrive at the playground. It's dark and kind of scary. I kick a rock in frustration. Mother can't make me wear those stupid frilly dresses, always telling me to dress up and look like a girl. I hate it. I don't like all of those frilly dresses and looking cute. It just gets in the way of playtime. My friends always make fun of me when I show up in a frilly dress and I can't play because mother doesn't want it to get dirty. I just want to go outside and play with my friends. But the playground is empty since most kids have a curfew and they've already gone home. I'm alone and I don't like it. Not even Cody is here to play with. Frustrated, I kick a rock into the metal blue dome on the playground. It makes a hollow sound as it bounces off. Who's there? Oh, there is vague voice acting, but not really, I think. Unless they've changed it again. I don't know how much they've changed. I'm startled by the sudden voice coming from the dome. It seems someone was hiding there. Come out. Come out, I yell, wanting to know who it is. It takes a while, but within seconds I see a small boy crawling out of the hole. I don't like that you can see my mouse. Can I just press enter, maybe? Uh, at first I see a bush of purple hair emerging from the hole. Then I see the rest of his body come out, revealing the dirt on his expensive-looking clothes. I can. His eyes are big and red, looking at me in fear. I don't recognize him at all. I'm not gonna hurt you, I tell him with a big smile. You're new here. What's your name? The boy says nothing. He looks down at his shoes instead. They're covered in dirt as well. Where are you from? I ask, continuing my questioning of this strange boy I've never seen before. You're definitely not from around here. The boy makes a tiny sniff, then rubs his nose with the cuff of his sleeve. Did you run away from home too? I ask him. I suddenly feel sad about my own situation, running away from my mother in the dress like that. You're not going to tell them, are you? The boy finally says. He sounds like he's been crying a lot. I smile at him. Of course not. We can be runaways together. He looks up at me, a spark returning to his eyes. Why are you running away? He asks. My mother wants me to wear clothes I don't want to, I say. I'm always being forced to dress girly. Mother and father always insist I wear these clothes, and they yell at me when I get them dirty. I give him one look over again. He's entirely dirty to his clothes. They must be real mad at you right now, then. The boy gives a shy nod. I... I don't want to go back. I always have to study and can never go out and play. I hate that. I just want to play as well. Get as dirty as I want, I exclaim. Mm. Mother and father won't allow me to play with any boys, so I run away. Well then, I'll play with you. Excitedly, excitedly, I grab his hand and drag him to the slide at the other end of the playground. Your parents aren't here to say no. <laughs> the boy finally manages to smile at me and I give him a big toothy grin back. He climbs to the top of the slide, then sits down to slide down. I can hear him giggle as he goes down. I quickly climb up as well and follow after him. It's so much fun to play with this boy. He's a bit shy and hesitant at first, but a couple of minutes in and he's the one racing to the top of the slide. <sighs> Mother and father would definitely never allow me to play like this, he says. Definitely not with other kids my age. Hey, I'm seven. How old are you? I ask with a wide smile. The boy slides down again, then turns to face me. I'm eight. You know, boys older than me should be more brave, I tell him. Then I wink at him and give him a thumbs up. He gives me a bashful smile back. I then grin at him and tap him on the arm. Tag, you're it, I call out. I dash away from him. Hmm? He looks at me question and questionably, simply standing on the same spot still. I run back and forth in front of him, but he's not moving to chase me at all. Why aren't you chasing me? You're it. He looks at me funny. I'm it. What does that mean? I blink at him and stop still. Do you mean you don't know how to play tag? Mm -hmm. I don't. No, I'm not sure. He shyly avoids looking me in the eye. Wow, you've never played tag before? Really? That's kind of amazing. Look, you tag someone like this and that means you're it and you should tag me in return if you can catch me. And if you, can't, if you tag me, I'm going to be chasing you instead. I walk up to him and tap him on the arm again. You're it. And then I run away from him. He nods his head and laughs, taking chase, and we both run playing tag. 
He's a fast learner, but I've never heard of a kid that didn't know how to play tag. Oz, the upper crust, you know? They don't do peasant. They don't do peasant games like tag. Either way, he's pretty fun to play with, and we run to our heart's content until we can't take it no more. We play together until the stars are twinkling in the night. I'm lying down in the grass, my clothes are stained completely. Weren't they already before? That should probably worry me, but I'm having too much fun with my new friend to care. If I could play like this every day, that'd be so awesome. Mm. Do you see those four bright stars? He asks. I look up at the sky, the stars sparkling bright, but I can see the one he's pointing at. Four bright stars in the shape of a square. Yeah, I see them. Mm. It's a star constellation. See the other three bright stars coming out of it? They call it the Little Dipper, he explains. Oh, I see. It looks like a frying pan. <laughs> wow, you're so smart. He shakes his head. It's just what my parents forced me to learn. Hmm. You don't like it when they force things on you, huh? They're always forcing me to learn. I don't want to go back. Do you hate your parents? I decide to ask. The boy takes his time to answer. No, he says eventually. I want to make them proud, but I really don't like all their little rules. I don't like rules either, I say. But your parents love you, right? The boy shrugs, I guess. That's good. My mother loves me too, even though she's always trying to get me to behave. He snickers at me. Why, do you always misbehave? All the time, I reply with a laugh. Your parents don't punish you. I just run away when they do. I give him a wink. Mm. You're so cool. You do whatever you want. I feel myself blush at the sudden adoration. Our moment is interrupted when I see flashlights shining our way. I can hear adult voices and a dog barking. Find the boy, one of the men yells. My eyes widen with fear when I recognize the uniforms on the group of men entering the playground. It's the police. They're here to find the boy. I'm sure of it. Luckily, they haven't spotted us yet. Oh no, I think they're looking for me, the boy says nervously. What should we do? The boy looks frightened, and I'm sure he doesn't want to go home just yet. Well, now I need to- wait, can I just- I can- I can still just- just use my keyboard. Quick, hide. I'll distract them, I tell the boy. He quickly hides behind one of the trees, and I step up towards the group of flashlights. Hey, there's a kid, yells out one of them. The police walked up, up, walk up to me, and I get nervous, feeling my stomach drop in a bundle of nerves, but I have to protect my new friend. So I swallow my unease and look him straight in the eye. No, it's not him. Hey, have you seen a little kid around here? Your rage and height, purple hair? We're looking for him. He's lost. I nod my head. Yes, I've seen him. He ran away when I tried to talk to him, though. Which way did he go? The police officer asks. I point in a random direction. He went that way about ten minutes ago. Everyone gather around. The boy went this way, the police officer yells. All the other men gather around and follow him as they walk into, into the direction I pointed at, leaving us alone on the playground. My heart is beating like crazy. I can't believe I fooled them. The boy appears from behind the tree and looks at me with dazzling eyes. Wow, you lied to them without blinking an eye, he says in awe. Are you kidding me? I was so nervous I thought my heart would jump out of my chest. I'm still surprised I managed to pull that off. Either way, the police are gone, but who knows for how long. We can't stay here forever, so I start to wonder where we should go, and the only thing I can think of is my home. Even if my mother is waiting for me at home with that dress in her hands, yes, that would be the best idea. I start to walk towards my house. We can hide there. Um... Where are we going? The boy asks when he notices that I'm walking away. My home, I reply. Mother will protect him. She will not. He says nothing but quietly follows me like a lost little puppy. Except when I got home, my mother contacted the boy's parents immediately and he was picked up very swiftly. I couldn't even get a word in and was punished harshly for running away with him. I never saw him anymore after that day. I sometimes still wonder what happened to him. How are you doing, Valky? Grandma asks with a big smile. Lately, Grandma hasn't been feeling well, so Mother and I went to visit her at the hospital. Grandma is hooked up to a bunch of machines with wires and tubes. It looks scary. I run over to her, climb the bed, and hug her. I'm fine if you are, I yell. Falky, get off the bed. Grandma needs her rest. Doctor's orders. I let go and climb down from the bed, standing next to my mother. How are things at home? Things are doing fine, although little Valky doesn't want to wear the dress that you made for her. I pout in response. Is that so? My grandma says with a laugh. I used to be just like you, she says, and then taps her finger on my nose. Were you as little as me? Oh, I was even shorter. Much smaller. I like to play around in the dirt without a care in the world. Those were the days, haha. <laughs> Did your mother make you wear skirts and dresses too? Mother sighs in the background. 
All the time, my grandma flashes a knowing smile to my mother. It wasn't really fit for a girl to not wear a skirt back then, so it was like I had no choice. So grandma was the same as me. Back then, all girls were taught simple sewing methods. We needed to be able to have skills suited for running a household. Stitching up torn fabric was one of them. Sounds boring, I yell. And it was. I didn't want to learn, because why would I use it? The mother cuts grandma off. But then she met grandpa, didn't you? Ah, yes, I met your grandpa when I was a little older. He was riding his bicycle, showing off in front of the popular kids. Then he fell. Quite hard. He had somehow managed to rip a hole in the seams of his trousers and everyone could see his underwear. The popular kids laughed and laughed at him. He was mortified. What happened then? Did you yell at the kids? No, my dear, I didn't. Instead, I pulled him to the side and asked him to strip. Mother! My mother yells. She's only seven. Grandmother laughs, which causes her to take a few coughs as well. Considering he couldn't be embarrassed any further, he took off his pants. I used my small little sewing kit to patch up the hole. You had a sewing kit with you? Yes, my mother forced me to carry one with me for emergencies, she said. I guess she was right. What happened between you and Grandpa then? Oh, honey, it was like a movie. We were inseparable since then. He would buy me roses to show how grateful he was. He didn't care if I wore a skirt or pants. He was just happy that I showed him compassion at a time when everyone else simply humiliated him. I smile at the story. I always like hearing how Grandma met my Grandpa, even though I barely knew him before he passed away. I don't remember the roses, Mother mentions thoughtfully. Ah, <laughs> well, I never told you everything. I guess carrying the sewing kit with me wasn't so bad after all, if it made me meet Grandpa, and so I started taking a slight interest in sewing. Oh. Well, that's not as interesting. And you know what's the easiest thing to make as a beginner? Socks, I say, just guessing. A skirt. Circle skirts are easy to make and I eventually got good at it. I realised it was pretty fun to make them. Getting to wear them myself was the best part. My grandma gives me a real big smile, and that, Valky, is how I started wearing skirts as well as pants. I don't really see why, though. I still don't want to wear girly stuff, but I'm happy grandma is smiling at me, so I smile back at her. Okay, let's go home, Valky. Grandma needs to recover. We can visit her again tomorrow. I hugged my grandma goodbye, and we left the hospital. Bye, boy. Grandma never got better. <laughs> What's that? I don't know why, but she got sicker, and then one day she was gone. Mother handled the funeral and I didn't know what to do and refused to leave my bedroom. I wanted to cry and yell it was unfair. Grandma was the nicest person on earth. Why was she taken from me? I'm sitting in my room, locked up. I don't want to go out and meet people downstairs. I'm sick of putting on a fake smile to pretend I'm happy. I'm not happy. Valky, please come out of your room, she begs me. No. I miss Grandma. She was always so kind and sweet to me. She always knew how to make me laugh, too. I start to rummage through my closet, digging through all my clothes, looking for something. I found it. It's the white box with the dress inside that my grandma made me. I quickly take off the lid, seeing the pink dress lying in the box untouched. I bury my face into it. It smells like grandma's place. It's comforting, so I hug the dress to my body. I'll treasure it, grandma. I'm not going to throw it away. I fall asleep on my bed with the dress in my hands. Okay, now that was chapter one. <laughs> um, is there anything more I can do? I can't do this stuff yet, can I? Oh no, I can. Wait, let me let me have a look at this just a bit more. Let's see, no. Uh, so this guy isn't available. This guy isn't available. This guy's not available. Don't even remember seeing him on the main screen. He's the latest guy. He's the one I haven't done at all. I can only assume he's gonna be my least favorite because I'm pretty sure he's a dominant type. I mean, it's good that everyone gets their own type, right? Just, just want to save. Um, what's this? Chapters. Chapter requirements are off, so I don't have to do this now. I used to ha used to have to do the design thing. That's so loud. That's so loud. Okay. Here I am. In front of me is a small store that used to be a jewellery store, and as of today, it's mine. This is so exciting. Ever since Grandma passed away, I had grown fond of the sewing machine she'd left me behind. It spurred me on to sew my own clothes and found out it was actually quite fun. I pursued my interest and went to art school, majoring in fashion. 
Grandma also left me behind a large inheritance so I could purchase my own boutique after I finished art school. That's very presumptuous of your grandma for when you were like seven and you had no interest in dresses and stuff. Olympus. And this is it, my own boutique. The bottom floor is the storefront and the floors above are my living area. I hurry and take out my keys to open the front door. An empty large room, room greets me. It is stripped of any personality and it needs some touching up. It's taken me some time and along with the help of my best friend Sarah, we finish up the boutique. Ooh, I can't believe it's finished, says Sarah as she stretches out. It looks amazing. Thanks for all your help. I'm really grateful that Sarah also lives in the same city and helped me out. We met each other in college. Sarah majored photography. She's been a great friend so far. Well, I'm definitely up for a break. Do you want to have a drink somewhere? Oh, sure. Do you know anything close by? I ask. Sarah knows the city more than I do. Of course, it's not too far from here. We can get there by foot. We both move out and I'm happily looking back to see my finished boutique. It's a dream come true. You can like upgrade the boutique, I think. We make our way further into the city until we come across a cozy looking cafe. A little further is a very modern hospital. It's nice to see I live so close to one. You'll never know when you need to go there for an emergency. I don't think that's foreshadowing, by the way. Could be, though. I don't think so, though. Is it? I feel I remember being in a hospital in this room. Me and Sarah enter the cafe. It's quite busy and lively with people having a cup of coffee or people typing away on laptops. I actually see a few people in a doctor's coat or nurse's outfit. I guess they come here to take a break. Mm. I'll go find us a seat. Why don't you go stand in line and grab me a cup of coffee? I patiently wait in line, order our drinks, and try to find Sarah again with a tray in my hands. I can see her sitting in the back, in one of the booths. I worm myself through a crowd of people, delicately balancing the tray. I've almost made my way over when suddenly someone knocks into me from behind by accident. Oh, Ah! I stumble forwards and the cups of coffee launch themselves off the tray, right onto the man's sleeve. Gah! He yells out in shock. The cups shatter on the floor, silencing the entire cafe. The man in front of me has his white dress shirt covered in one gigantic coffee stain. He's rubbing it and wincing in pain. I feel mortified and rush over to him. I'm so sorry, I yell out. I pull out a tissue from my bag and hand it over to him. There's no need, the man hisses at me, rejecting my tissue. This is ruined. You ruined it. It was an accident, I murmur softly. The man flicks the coffee off his fingers and starts to glare at me. I suppose walking straight is too much of a task for you. This was a real cornier. <laughs> I blush as I recognize the brand name. It's one of the more expensive ones. Uh, there's no need to insult me. It was a mistake. I can agree that your two left feet are a mistake, he spits out. Sarah has finally come over to see what the commotion is about and steps in front of me. Back off there, buddy. She apologized. No need to snap at her. I get you're my best friend, but I don't need you fighting my battles for me. I'm good. I got this. Sarah is staring him down like a tiger protecting her cubs. The other people in the cafe suddenly stop being interested and return to what they were doing. <laughs> What's this? She can't speak for herself. See, you're making me look bad, girl. Says the man with a vicious tone. Of course I can speak for myself. The man gives me a snide glare in response. <laughs> she speak. I already spoke, dude. Look, I can pay for the dry cleaning bill, I offer. A clerk comes running up and starts picking up the broken pieces of glass from the ground. I bend down to help them, feeling obligated since it was my fault after all. Yeah. I don't have time for this, the man says, and he briskly walks away. Don't pay him any mind, Valky, says Sarah. That's just how some city folk are, rude and obnoxious. Especially the rich ones. <laughs> I bite my lip and help clean up the mess I made. I feel pretty embarrassed by the encounter, but me and Sarah stay, Sarah stay at the cafe once we were offered free replacements. I'm glad they didn't ask me to give them any sort of compensation for breaking their cups. Putting the event to the back of my mind, me and Sarah talk about our lives and what's going on. Sarah's excited about a new camera that she's getting, as she's a professional photographer. She's waxing poetic about all of its features, and then suggests we should hold a photo shoot with my designs. This way she has some pictures to fill up her portfolio, and I get to use them for my own advertising purposes. We both eagerly talk about the specifics of the photo shoot. However, no matter how much I try, I keep wondering about that man, as I do still feel guilty about spilling coffee all over him. It was pretty rude about it, though. I guess city folk really are different. Yeah, he's just a jerk. Just a jerk. See, decorate. 
Um. There's only one. There's an, wait. Oh, don't I have to go to the shop? Yeah. Apparently, I'm not allowed to go to the shop. Okay, here we go. Uh, I might. Mm hmm. See, this is weird because this guy is one of the. This, he's like one of the love interests. But he's here for some reason. Let's see, and I wonder if there's anything new. Wait, wallpaper. So these are the really expensive ones. I don't remember seeing this one. There's not a new one for his route. They introduced that. I don't. I might do it. Yeah, I will see you in the next one.